Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, February 6th. Tesla has filed to trademark the term Tesla One for what appears to be a new in-house work mobile application. Tesla wrote about the new trademark, quote, Tesla One trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of downloadable computer software in the nature of a mobile application for document management, workforce timekeeping, and scheduling, analysis of employee time and activity, tracking purchase orders and returns, completing customizable comment forms, and database management. Now, the automaker is known for developing its own enterprise software instead of relying on commonly used software. Most famously, Tesla has created its own all-encompassing enterprise software that manages all parts of its business, from sales to supply chain, and it has been in use for some years now. It looks like Tesla One might be a new addition to Tesla's in-house software. Tesla's infamous full self-driving beta version 11 update was supposed to be in November of last year, but it has been delayed many times. But Elon Musk now says it's coming this week. The full self-driving beta version 11 is both an exciting and scary step as it is supposed to merge Tesla's full self-driving and the autopilot highway stacks. Some are afraid that merging of the two could potentially negatively affect their autopilot experience on highways. The beta system hasn't had a significant update in some time, which some see as a problem because it makes Tesla's road to a true level 4 self-driving system hard to imagine. A new video of Tesla's Cybertruck impressive four-wheel steering at work has leaked. Rear-wheel steering is quickly becoming the must-have feature for electric pickup trucks coming to market. GMC started by demonstrating what they called crap mode, and several other automakers have shown a version of the feature, including Rivian and even Hyundai. Regarding the Cybertruck, last year we saw a quick video of the truck showcasing the feature for just a second. But now we have a much better look thanks to a Twitter user named Tokyo Tesla. The video shows a truck indoors maneuvering around a support post in a warehouse. It's not clear if this video is the beta prototype, as it appears to actually be the alpha truck with the large side mirror and the lack of tonneau cover. We're not 100% sure, but the video also appears to be filmed at Gigafactory Texas, possibly during the event where the Cybertruck was featured. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, host of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. The first fully electric Lexus SUV in the U.S., the RZ450e, is now available for pre-order. After several years of neglecting fully electric technology to focus on hybrid and fuel cells, Toyota is finally coming around, announcing that their luxury Lexus brand will go fully electric with a range of zero-emission EVs by the year 2030. This new model, based on the Toyota BZ4X, is their first one in, hopefully many EVs to come. According to Lexus's website, the premium RZ450e trim starts at $59,650, while the luxury model will run you $65,150. Powertrain sounds a little familiar, with a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery pack that features up to 220 miles of driving range and 313 horsepower. It includes plenty of features, such as an advanced park, a 10-inch heads-up display, acoustic front and rear side glass, and ambient lighting. On the exterior, we've got typical Lexus appeal on this crossover platform. The Lexus RZ450e will have some stiff competition, especially with established players like Tesla with the Model Y, starting at a price of $4,600 less and with 110 more miles of range. And also the charging network, that's pretty good. But Tesla actually isn't alone in competing for this luxury Lexus spot. Volvo's electric SUVs, both the C40 and XC40 Recharge, they start at $55,300 and $53,000, and they have more range and impressive safety features and tech. I could go on and on. I'm sorry. (laughs) 
According to Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom, the automaker is in deep with development of a new SUV that will be unlike any previous model that we've seen. Bloom confirmed last year that the automaker would launch a sporty all-electric SUV that they were calling the K1. It was announced that the new flagship luxury electric SUV would feature seven seats, which is a first for Porsche, and advanced off-road capabilities. But now, according to a report from Autocar, the K1 off-road electric SUV will offer the latest in synchronous electric motors, high-performance battery, and fast charging technology. There isn't too much else in terms of specs in the report, but it is said to house a considerable ride height and incorporate elements from the Mission R concept from 2021. Porsche looks to launch this flagship K1 in 2027. EV startup Canoe is raising cash again after running low on funding as they work to reach full production. It's been a crazy ride so far for Canoe as they were on the verge of going under, and then several large fleet orders, including one from Walmart, saved the fledgling company, at least for a time. Despite this, Canoe said that it was still running low on cash back in November, mentioning that they need to raise funds by selling new stock. So Canoe said in a press release today that it has entered into definitive agreements with certain undisclosed institutional investors for the purchase and sale of 5 million shares of Canoe's common stock together with warrants. This hasn't been all great news as Canoe's stock, which is trading under the ticker GoEV, is down over 10% today as investors digest this news. Canoe has actually been down 80% in the past year, so there's that. EV Fast Charging Network Electrify America has kicked off the week with some personnel shakeups, including current president and CEO Giovanni Palazzo, who will shift into a position as chairman of the board to make room for Rob Barossa. With the new role as chairman, Palazzo will also join Volkswagen Group as its senior vice president of charging and energy. His new role at Volkswagen is expected to begin in July 1st. This news came less than a week after travel centers announced the deployment of over 1,000 Electrify America chargers at 200 roadside locations. When Electrify's new CEO takes over this summer, he will continue towards the goal of getting more than 1,800 charging stations and 10,000 chargers up and running by the year 2026. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Dan Feinberg says, did you hear the brilliant speculation about Elon Musk on Autoline after hours? One of the guest experts suggested Elon's recent increase in right-wing political trolling is intended to win over American pickup truck buyers ahead of the Cybertruck launch. What are your thoughts? Well, Dan, it is certainly an interesting take on Musk's recent behavior. Regarding the Tesla Semi, I think this is some important backstory, Someone suggested that Tesla didn't talk at all about the autonomous capabilities of the semi-truck when it was launched because Tesla was trying to win over the human truckers whose careers would be seriously at risk if autonomous trucks were being promoted. To me, the absence of discussion of the truck's autonomous future is a little suspicious. Now, regarding the Cybertruck, myself, I find it hard to imagine that Musk would engage in political trolling for the express purpose of winning customers to a vehicle that's not even being sold yet. He may have won over some favor from the political right, but it has come at a very heavy cost. Although Tesla has negotiated a place at the tax incentive table, some believe that his antics negatively affected Tesla's impending eligibility. In a very public case, investors were calling for Musk to step down, primarily on account of his Twitter acquisition, but certainly it was fueled by the persistent mocking and derision that he has over left-wing politics. To me, these are not signs of a calculated risk for the sake of sales. I'm sure the Cybertruck will be an awesome vehicle and will sell incredibly well, but I believe that the Model Y and the Model 3 will still outsell the truck after the initial blast is over. To me, it seems much more likely that Musk is going over a very public change in his personal beliefs and not that he is engaging in a clandestine advertising campaign for the sake of future truck sales. But that's my opinion. What do you think? You can let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G. And I hope you have a great day.